Now, you're the secret, uh, deputy chair of the Australian Labor uh, Com Torres Strait Islander and Aboriginal Caucus. Sorry to butcher that title, but um, did you attend a Black Lives Matter rally in Darwin last weekend? Uh, no, I didn't, Annalise. I'm, I'm no longer uh, the deputy secretary, but we call it the First Nations uh, Caucus Committee these days, and uh, it does really important work and proud to be in the uh, committee. So why didn't you attend? Uh, I went camping with my family up in the top end. At the moment, it's beautiful. And uh, it was uh, great to get away with uh, my family for a couple of nights under the stars, enjoying the, all that the territories got to offer before coming down here and representing my electorate uh, for these two sitting weeks. We've heard from a lot of uh, First Nations people in this country, though, that they felt compelled to attend these rallies, a number of your Labor colleagues, to support the cause, in particular the number of Indigenous deaths in custody. You didn't feel compelled to attend for those reasons? I've felt compelled to act in uh, my life. Uh, before I ever thought about politics, I joined uh, legendary AFL footballer Michael Long as he walked to Canberra to ask the Prime Minister of the time, John Howard, where is the love? Where is the love for Aboriginal people, First Nations people in our nation? Uh, and we tried to get back onto the agenda. Uh, the massive disparity, uh, the racism in parts, uh, but the need for us all to come together and for First Nations people to have a voice in this nation. I was proud to walk with Michael Long as a way of protesting uh, the fact that at that time the uh, Liberal government uh, didn't seem to have much love at all for Aboriginal Australians in our country. And I continue to work as a member of the Labor Caucus to push for a voice uh, for First Nations people uh, and to instil the Uluru Statement in our country, because that's what's going to make our country stronger and more proud of our, our, our past, warts and all. We've got to tell the truth uh, and move on together. So did health concerns prevent you from attending the rally? No, wanting to spend time with my family uh, meant that uh, I wasn't in Darwin during the rally, uh, but I've been talking to the Larrakia Nation elders and just talking through uh, history, talking through our story uh, in the Territory, good and bad, but also Territorians are very... Uh, sensible and pragmatic. Uh, and I know that uh, if there is any protest activity in the future, uh, it'll be respectful if it's Territorians, uh, because that's the way forward, uh, working together. Uh, and, of course, the Chief Minister of the Northern Territory has made it very clear uh, that all um, medical advice is to be followed. So you then support your Labor colleagues who did defy the med medical advice, did defy those government orders, which are law, and attend the rallies? Uh, and the, look, I support, um, I support us moving together in sensible and peaceful ways and following uh, health advice. Now, there's been uh, lots of commentary uh, in the Northern Territory and in Darwin, where I'm from, uh, the numbers were much lower than other places. Uh, there's a job here for premiers uh, and chief ministers to show leadership uh, in this issue. Uh, but, of course, uh, people will make their own decisions about whether to do that or not, and I just stress um, that they shouldn't be putting their fellow Territorians or their fellow Australians in harm's way. Uh, they should abide by uh, directions given. Uh, that's the way ahead. The Finance Minister, Matthias Cormann, said that people who attend those rallies should be open to a discussion about having their job seeker payments taken off them. Do you agree? Uh, I think Matthias Cormann just seeks to take any opportunity to uh, instil fear, instil division in our country. Uh, I think he's a disgrace. Uh, we are going through a very difficult time uh, with the response to COVID. What we need is patriotic Australians, and I mean everyone, uh, to be showing sensible caution, uh, but to be providing leadership and not to be seeking to divide 
Australians. So that's what I want to see from the government. And I also want to see from Matthias Cormann, he actually cares about Territorians. Now, we have got a situation where the representation for Territorians uh, in the House of Representatives may be halved. Now, Matthias Cormann could talk to the Prime Minister and say, let's guarantee that the Northern Territory keeps its representation. That would be uh, a no-brainer, I think, for most Australians would agree with that. So let's see where the Prime Minister actually cares about Territorians, let alone Aboriginal Territorians. I, I want to see more leadership from the Prime Minister, not seeking to divide. We'll come to the representation of uh, Territorians in the Lower House in a moment, but I did just want to uh, wrap off that topic of the things affecting Aboriginal Australians at the moment, and that's including the comments made by the Prime Minister on radio yesterday. He was speaking in the context of James Cook and his experience in Australia, but he did say there wasn't a history of Aboriginal slavery in Australia, and that's incorrect. What's your response to those comments that the Prime Minister made? I just think the Prime Minister needs to educate himself. And the way he can do that is by getting out and talking to First Nations leaders, um, historians, some more scientists uh, would be good, so that he has a fuller appreciation of our history. Like, we shouldn't be rewriting Australian history. We should be just telling the truth about our nation and be proud of who we are and where we're going. It's sensible that we are honest with each other uh, because if we continue uh, down the road of building our nation without acknowledging where we've come from uh, and where we're going, um, that's not going to be good for our nation. So I just encourage him to, uh, again, not divide Australians, but bring them together, particularly at this time when our nation is uh, facing difficult times. So we need proper leadership and uh, that's what I hope that the Prime Minister starts to uh, show. And there's been calls for some colonial-type statues to be pulled down around Australia, those of James Cook and others. Would you agree with a review of Australian statues? As I said, Annalise, I don't think we should be rewriting history, I think we should be telling it in a more fulsome way. In Darwin, uh, where I represent, uh, we're pushing ahead and hopefully the federal government will join in a Larrakia Nations Cultural Centre. We're really proud of our First Nations Australians and our heritage uh, and I'd like to see uh, some statues of some of the great leaders of uh, First Nations people in the Northern Territory. So we tell a fuller, uh, truer history of our great nation. Uh, and again, that will provide a better foundation on which we will face all the challenges, the global challenges, the regional challenges, the local challenges, uh, and we'll face them better together um, when we have a fuller appreciation of where we come from. And as I said, we need strong leadership to take us forward. And there has been this look back in history as well, as well at the story of Teddy Sheehan. There's calls for a review into posthumously awarding him the Victoria's Cross honour. Now, that would be against the normal protocol. Why should an exception be made for Teddy Sheehan? Well, the Prime Minister should have followed the advice of the Independent Defence Honours and Awards Appeals Tribunal when they unanimously said that that young Australian man who fought... Uh, who fought to his last breath on a sinking ship to protect his mates in the water, that young man should have received a VC. The Prime Minister had the opportunity to say, yep, let's do it, let's uh, recommend to the Sovereign uh, that that is awarded. He's decided not to do that. Now he's bringing an eminent Australian, uh, Dr Brendan Nelson, into his sort of dodgy workaround to try and have a review into a review that's independent and has already said that Teddy Shan uh, should win that award. Now, 1942 in Darwin, not only were we bombed, uh, but we were keeping up the fight on behalf of every other Australian, and the Armadale was doing that work, and Teddy gave his life. Now, I just wonder if Teddy Shan had been from Sydney, whether we would have had a different outcome. But I just hope, again, that the Prime Minister starts to show some leadership uh, and not do this stupid waste of taxpayers' money uh, workaround because we know that the, there is 
it's overwhelming evidence that Teddy deserves the VC. And I spoke to Ray Leonard, last surviving uh, member of that HMAS Armadale crew, that Teddy gave his life saving Ray and his mates in the water. And he just said he's so disappointed in the Prime Minister not awarding that medal and he hopes he, he does so.